to God. His mercies are renewed every day. And every day we get up, we can say, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. How many is thankful today? Bless the Lord that we're here, made whole and well. Amen. Walked in here. Got up in our right minds this morning. Some folks may debate that. But we know we're not normal. We are not the new normal. But we are the normal that the Word says. That we are whole. We have, we have the right to speak the Word concerning healing. Remember what the Lord said last week? This today was going to be healing. There was going to be a healing. I've got more texts to come in and confirm that. That miracles will happen today. Healings will take place. Some will take place without one person touching them, Cynthia. They'll just get they'll get healed during praise today as they praise. Did you know praise brings a healing flow? Because it stops the enemy from his assignment against you. Amen. Amen. So let's shout the name above all names today. Jesus!
taking a trip around the world. Oh, we do it. We're dancing in the Holy Ghost. All over the world, the Holy Ghost is the same. He is wooing and calling, calling people to Jesus' name. It makes no difference where you live, what side of the planet you are on. Jesus is the only way, and this is a Holy Ghost song. Taking a trip around the world. Come on. Taking a trip around the world. Taking a trip around the world. We're dancing in the Holy Ghost. Taking a trip around the world. Taking a trip around the world. Taking a trip around the world. We're dancing in the Holy Ghost. Somebody sing a tongue. Go, Shelby. our God you have to keep one name in your forefront of your mind it's that name on that screen right there Jesus there's only one Jesus and no matter who in this world tries to claim that they are the way there's only one way that's his name right there on that screen no matter who tries to say they are the life there's only one life his name is on that screen right there. There's only one truth. His name is on that screen right there. So I dare you right now to get his name on your lips and begin to sing it out loud. You know his name. Jesus. Come on. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, that's it. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, come on, dude. Jesus, 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 there's only one way, one truth, and one life. His name is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Christ. He's the only way, He's the only door. So why don't you stop looking for more? Just look to him. Come on, look to him. Look to Jesus. Yeah, look to him. Say this with me. J-E-S-U-S. J-E-S-U-S. That's it, come on. J-E-S-U-S. J-E-S-U-S. Come on. J-E-S-U-S. 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 
Taking a trip around the world Taking a trip around the world Taking a trip around the world We're dancing in the Holy Ghost Taking a trip around the world Taking a trip around the world Taking a trip around the world Dancing in the Holy Ghost Go Gino, come on the Lord began to talk to me this morning about a mystery you know the Bible talks about the mystery hidden in God and the Apostle Paul pulled aside for two years or more to discover the mystery and by revelation knowledge he got that he went to Sinai he went to different places and he, but he stayed away and he, he went to the Lord and and things happened in Paul's life that was just amazing. <clears throat> the Apostle Paul, who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, he, he experienced an experience with God that, that I don't know that anyone else ever has besides just other than Jesus, who is God in the flesh. But the Apostle Paul discovered the mystery of Christ Christ in you the hope of glory see we have a mystery hidden within us there's a mystery in you and destiny is set out in front of you by God himself see God knows the plans he has for you plans to prosper you plans to give you an expected end and a future he knows these plans he has for you. He has never been derailed on his thoughts. He knows the plans he has for you and I. You and I are trying. We, we, we worship and we enter the word and we begin to study and we pray because he's wanting you to draw close to that mystery. See, it's a mystery. That's, and it's something you seek and you look at. And you seek him and you get close to what he's planned for you. 
But destiny is set out like a big shining light out in front of you in your lifetime. And if you, it's so bright that the devil can't look at it. He looks and he, 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 he has to shield his eyes. He don't know exactly what that is. But he knows it's his demise. So what is the mystery hidden in us? It's your part of the mystery of God. It's your part of the revelation of God to bring to pass in the earth. That he wants to use you to bring that part of it to pass. And it may seem so minute to you say, what could God possibly do with me? You're going to be amazed one day when, when we all are in heaven and you turn around and look and there's somebody standing there and the Lord has given out rewards. And he says, call this person, this person, this person. They all come up. And then there's this giant trophy, tall as us, standing there. And the Lord tells this angel, take off back there about 28 miles and bring that person up here. And that angel whoosh, whoosh, has them back right there. And it's a famous somebody that you thought well yeah i can see this and then he said tells that angel go right over there about 38 miles that way and bring sister so and so up here Shroom. and that dear saint that gray-haired saint standing there never had any recognition at all and he looks over and he says now brother so and so I want you to carry this trophy around for her because it was her prayer that why you did everything you did. She was the one who prayed everything you did into being. So you may think that your part of this mystery is just little, but it's huge. And you just don't know how huge. But God does. You, you're not going to have any idea one day when people approach you in heaven and say, you know, if it hadn't have been for you, I wouldn't be here. And you'll say, who are you? I'm the one that God woke you up at three in the morning one night to pray over. He woke you up early one morning about three to pray over. And I'm here because of that. So this mystery that's inside us, the Lord is wanting to put you in tune with that. A, a destiny is very compelling. A destiny, once you catch a glimpse of it, it is a motivator. It will make you, once you see it, you'll never turn it loose and, and you'll just be drawn toward it constantly drawn toward it hallelujah let's just lift our hands and thank our God we thank him for destiny for a mystery a mystery is something he wants you to enjoy the journey. Hallelujah. There's so much ahead of you in your future that he has planned for you and I. If you could see it, one glimpse of it today. And it don't include sickness. And it don't include disease. And it don't include punishment for anything like using these things in order to shape and turn your life. There's sickness and disease. If it could shape and turn your life, then Jesus wouldn't have had to bore that on the cross in order that you didn't have to have it. it he would have never had to have taken that if that's what was going to be used to shape your life. I don't know where the church gets such ideas. And we say, well, and I've even seen paintings where somebody supposed to be the hands of God like this and sand pouring through it. 
And it says in the caption, nothing touches my life unless it's sifted through the hands of God. They're meaning sickness, disease, turmoil, whatever may come. It had to have come through his hands is what they're saying to you. But do you not know that if sickness touched the hand of God, it would not be sick anymore? How can it touch the hands of God and still exist? Here's a news flash. God is not sick. And he's never been sick. And Jesus bore our sickness and carried our pain so that you wouldn't have to. So you are not the sick today trying to get well. You are the healed and the devil's trying to steal your health away from you. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. He don't have a medicine cabinet. He don't. He, pro he provided the cure yeah. for everything at one time. Yeah. You're not the sick trying to get well. You are the healed. And Satan's trying to make you sick. He's trying to steal your health from you. Listen to the words of the Lord in Jeremiah. I know the plans I have for you. <laughs> plans to prosper you and give you an expected end and a great future and a future and a future and a future and a great future won't you lift up your hands and say i have a great future god has planned it all for me i choose to walk toward it i choose to walk i choose to walk in it my future. My future. Hallelujah. All over the world say it on the other side of those cameras. It is time that we get really animated about these things. Taking a trip around the world. Taking a trip around the world. Taking a trip around the world. Dancing in the Holy Ghost. Taking a trip around the world Taking a trip around the world Taking a trip around the world Dancing in the Holy Ghost Trip around the world Come on Taking a trip around the world Taking a trip around the world Dancing in the Holy Ghost Taking a trip around the world Taking a trip around the world Dancing in the Holy Ghost Taking a trip all across the ocean Gonna go to China This morning You can see them lift their hands and praise our God Proclaiming in China Jesus is Lord Come on Taking a trip around the world Taking a trip around the world We're taking a trip around the world We're dancing in the Holy Ghost Come on Taking a trip around the world Yeah Taking a trip around the world Come on Taking a trip around the world We're dancing in the Holy Ghost Going over to Russia What's happening there? Oh, there's a great revival in the land of the bear People are lifting their hands and worshiping our God. And even at night in the Kremlin, they're praying, saying, Lord, now what? Taking a trip around the world. Taking a trip around the world. Taking a trip around the world. We're dancing in the Holy Ghost. Taking a trip around the world. Yeah. Taking a trip around the world. Oh, yeah. Around the world. Dancing in the Holy Ghost. There's more going on than you and I realize around the world right now. There are leaders of nations who would never tell each other in their cabinets that they're praying. But they are scared right now. All of them are scared. Listen, 
You have it all wrong if you think people like Putin really wants a nuclear war. He don't want that. It would devastate everything. They know it. Their life is over. These are people who have a global agenda planning these things. So there are leaders of nations you would think are rogue are actually praying, saying, now what? What do we do? God help us. So when the Lord moves on you and I to intercede and pray, do it. Do it. You don't know what kind of answer he can get to someone. Hallelujah. We're in a great turning point right now in this nation and around the world. And it's going to turn. And come hell or high water, it's going to turn. And when it turns, there's going to be a revival like you've never seen. And religion is going to get left in the dust. And it's going to be a relationship that will swell up all around the world with Jesus the Christ. Only one name, only one name given under heaven whereby men must be saved. His name is shouting. What's his name? Jesus. Come on. Jesus. Come on. Jesus. He is the name. Come on, say it again. Jesus. Come on, shout it. Jesus. 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 Taking a trip around the world. Taking a trip around the world. Taking a trip around the world. We're dancing in the Holy Ghost. Taking a trip around the world. Taking a trip around the world Taking a trip around the world We're dancing in the Holy Ghost Can you hear it? excited to have entered into a prophetic time now see today God is preparing people to be healed physically spiritually mentally God is going to set people free today some of you right now during this music time you're going to be set free some of you that experienced sexual abuse when you were just little, you're about to be set free right here in your soul and your thinking right now while this is going on. It makes no difference. God is going to deliver his people. He wants you free. You know that? So if you are hooked on drugs today, you can be free. You can just be absolutely set free where you're standing. You can be caught up in a, in a homosexual lifestyle and today, just like you snap your fingers, you're a new person. You're brand new, moving another direction. Some of you could, could be hating. You may hate so deep, and you may have had reason. But I'm gonna tell you something. You can be set free just like that. God has come into the room and all around the world through those cameras to heal his people today. Some of you have reports from doctors that just ain't good that you just don't know how in the world that prognosis can be reversed. But he is the reversal. His name is the reversal. Philippians 2, 9, 10, and 11 is your word. Philippians 2, 9, 10, and 11 is what you need to be heard. God 
God has given Jesus a name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus everything in heaven and earth must bow. And things in hell must bow as well. Yeah, things in hell, it must bow as well. Israel. The lion is roaring, flushing out tunnels. The lion is roaring in Israel. The lion will roar from the top of Hermon all the way to the Dead Sea and all the land of Gaza and all the surrounding militaries. For you have bitten off more than you can chew when you came against the Lion of Israel. For one roar and one shake of my mane can upend every plan that you've made. So get ready to hear the roar and dreams are being given like Gideon heard in the night. A loaf of bread rolling from a mountain sets the Midianites to flight. The loaf of bread represents my covenant, the covenant I made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The lion is roaring in Israel. The lion is roaring in Jacob. Hallelujah. For by the end of this one, Israel will realize that the blood bought, the Christians are their best friends. And it will be a wonderful opportunity, says the Lord, to share Mashiach with them again. For they are mine in the apple of my eye. And what you're witnessing is the weighing of nations and rogue kings that have gone awry. For I'm setting them in the scales. Every day they are being weighed. Nations from one end of the earth to the other. Listen close to what they have to say about Israel and what they're going to do and how they're going to treat my people in my land. For you say, why? Why is it that another nation can't be? It's because the dirt of Machpelah and the field is still inside you and me. And so the dust is in the balance in the buckets. Isaiah told you very plain because the very dust of Machpelah is still there being weighed. The land of portals the land of fire and the land where the lion roars. It is also la the land where Mashiach, Messiah, Jesus defeated the liar. 
It is the city of the great king, Jerusalem. And therefore it is desired. But no one will win in the end against Israel. No matter how many mercenaries they hire. For I have bent my arm and flexed my arm in the Mideast sand. So when you pray, give a shout of victory out for Israel, my land. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Oh, that's not all. I just, I just don't know how to land the plane. We're in a point of turning. Now listen, you say, how does this have anything to do with a healing service? It's because it's the point of turning. Now, I want you to hear that again. It is the point of turning, and turning is happening everywhere in every sphere, on every level, in every nation. It's the time of the turning. That means it's the time of not only turning nations, but turning your body around. It's the time of extending life and giving you new ground. It is the time God is, is expanding and saying, enlarge your tents and strengthen your stakes, for your life is not over. It's just beginning today. Hallelujah. Take hold of it. Take hold of his robe because he's going to shake the earth from the mountains to the sea. And whatever's not holding on will be shaken off in the dust, you see. So take hold and take hold strong. Stretch out your stakes. Lengthen your stakes. Let God give you more in this time. More what? More health. More prosperity. More peace. More reach. And more of Him. He's offering us as He passes by. I'm in the Spirit right now in a place where I speak in rhyme. It's in a place I don't plan. It just happens from time to time. And it's a place where God puts thing in, things in harmony and people's lives are blessed again and again and again. And it's a place and a point in time of turning where people are freed from their sin things that have taken hold and locked in your mind like a vice can now be shaken loose in an atmosphere like this. And some of you will be free by tonight. And you will wonder, what has happened? What's happened to me? The Lord said, lo and behold, from on high, I came and set you free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. said he would he would let me come back and say more here shortly I dare you to give him a shout and I
Hallelujah. Pulling my, out my brother Timothy. Hallelujah. Did you hear that, Krista? You were playing in tongues just for a moment in the spirit. Did you hear yourself? No. You did. Praise God. I've never seen that happen. I don't that I know of. You were speaking between two worlds. Your spirit was talking while your English was talking. Wow. I tell you, this is a morning. This is a yeah. time. It's a time that I believe you can transcend yeah. and reach both worlds where yeah. you are. Don't, don't shy away from the right. supernatural. The very air you breathe is supernatural. The very way your bones were formed in the womb is supernatural. Solomon said, how does the bones grow inside a womb? David talked about things like that, and Solomon talked. How did it, they can't fathom how it happens. It's supernatural. Your hair is supernatural. How does it grow? How does it, what, what happens? What changes the color of it? What happens? How does fingernails grow? How do you have a thought? registers in your spirit and forms into words that we can understand and draw a picture in our mind all at the same time. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Take advantage of that. Begin to say that. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. And God will use that today to turn your body around. Oh, thank God. God for a supernatural king that's not bound to this mess you see around. He's supernatural. Remember when man had a contest with God. Said we as scientists can do what you can do. Let's have a contest. God says okay. The Lord said, let's make a man. They said, okay. So they go and gather dirt. And God says, wait, get your own dirt. <laughs> Even the dirt is supernatural. Yeah. My God, how did it form in his hand? Right. Right. How did dirt form in his hand? Isaiah says he meted it out the heavens with a span. And weighed the hills in a balance. Comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure. And cupped the water in his palm. And calculated everything. First he created it and then calculated it. And then gave you dominion over it. That made him smile more than anything else to see you have that kind of authority. And we constantly try to give it back. He says, we're co-laborers together. I do on my side of the line, you do on your side of the line, and we will absolutely have a great time. But if the church won't speak, and we constantly say God's doing it all, good or bad, I can only imagine what he thinks. He's supernatural. And when he puts his super with your natural, all of a sudden, Elijah outruns chariots, king's chariots. All of a sudden, David can run through a troop and jump over a wall. Goliath's fall. Hallelujah. You're fearfully, respectfully, Heaven respects you and hell fears you. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have too many, too many witches and people drawn to the occult that are really prophets that the enemy sucked off into a ditch. God wants to set them free and bring them back into the prophetic. We have too many evangelists that have had their identity stolen with homosexuality. God wants to give them back their true identity and bring them back into his so that they have a family, a future, and a destiny. Instead of the lifestyle they're in, confines them to one spot until they die and rot. No growth. No life. So today's a day of turnaround. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, you can do better than that. You've been doing better than that all morning. Well, if today is a day of turnaround, then I would say it's a great time for offering time, right? Amen. Here at Church International. Those of you watching by live stream today, first of all, we want to welcome you from all around the world. Remember, just because you are not here physically does not mean you are any less a part of what God is doing in this place today, in this healing service here today. And we didn't call it that. He called it that. It's a healing service today, spiritually, physically, financially, all the things today. Today is a day of turnaround. Today is a healing service. And all you have to do on the other side of that camera, remember God is not limited to a camera lens. Half of you, I would dare to say 98% of you in this building are here because you were once on the other side of that camera lens. And now you're here today. So tell me, yes... Tell me that God is limited to this side of the camera. You can't do that because he's not. You put him in a box, I assure you he will get out. So on the other side of that camera, stretch your hands towards whatever device, whatever you're watching this service on today, whether it's right now or whether this is at a later time. The power of God also knows no time either. Why? He is the author of time. He, he's not limited to time either. And we just send this today, whatever is in this, we decree and declare that it's coming straight through that camera and filling wherever you are at today in Jesus' name. And you just say, I receive it. Praise God. Praise God. Well, it is offering time. So those of you in-house, if you need an envelope, please raise your hand. Somebody will see to it that you get one. Those of you watching online, the ways to give are on the screen. And also, if you're giving online, whether in person or on the other side of that camera, the ways to give are on the screen as well. I don't know them by heart, but if you can read, there they are, right there. So you can go to churchint.org, and all the ways to give are there also. Today, as you're getting your offering together, and I had, I had a dream last night that I'm about to say what I'm about to say. And, um, and that's, that's, the way, that's the way the Lord works with me a lot of times, is, is I, have, I cannot tell you how many messages I have preached where I dreamed that I preached them the night before. And... Um, you know, it's like we're part of a prophetic ministry or something. And um, this, this week, this past week, uh, Monday night, I was in uh, Hendersonville, Tennessee at the Fireplace Fellowship. And, um, and yes, it was powerhouse week. Uh, Dad spoke on Wednesday night. I spoke on Monday night. And um, the pastor said something during that and I want to tell you something Monday night if if you want to watch man they did a reel on me too and I looked at it and I was like oh my gosh did I say that it was one of those things where you were like okay well if I was not considered controversial before 
I am now. And um, I was like, I mean, I'm literally like, this is me watching my phone around everybody. I was going, <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. But that's what God does. <laughs> Jesus was the biggest rebel of all time and uh, still is. So, uh, but what is he rebellious against? The dark side and, and the things of this world and religion and uh, he came to deliver us from all of that. And so the title of my message Monday night was Deliverance is a Person. And uh, how we have, you know, to sum up the whole message, you've got this movement now in the church that everybody thinks that everybody has a demon <laughs> and that you're demon-possessed. And, um, you know, everybody will say, well, everybody has a demon. No, I don't. I, I don't have one, um, never, never have had one that I know of. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I've heard people say before, it, you know, it's just like, well, they're dealing with this devil, or they're dealing with that. Well, you may be fighting that particular devil. You may come up to a battle with that particular devil, but that don't mean you own that devil. Because if you are a spirit-filled, blood-bought believer, you are not a duplex. You're not. Can you be oppressed by the devil? Yes. Yes, you can. But possession is a whole different thing. So people think that you are not delivered from something unless you're climbing the walls backwards and all this kind of stuff. Go ahead. Well, stand there and hold the mic. You know, um, Brother Hagen used to say this. You, don't you love Brother Hagen? Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. I mean, my goodness. Well, Brother Hagen used to say this. They asked him. They would ask him, can Christians have a devil? Can Christians have a demon? He said, Christians can have anything they want. He said, some of them take them to church and pet them all day. Now you see how they can have them? Yeah, yeah. They can have anything they want. Yeah. They can care. A lot of them, you'd be surprised. People, I, I, they come in and sit on the front row with them <laughs> and, and, and pet their little slimy, ugly heads. I don't do demons. And I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you something. A spirit keep manifesting in front of me long enough, and I'll deal with it when the Lord says, now, deal with that. There's one follow Paul and, and, uh, uh, around for, what, three days? Mm -hmm. And finally, Paul was grieved. Yeah. He didn't move till the Spirit of God said something. Then he turned around and said, come out of her. Well, her days of that was over. So if you, if you keep doing that, the day will come. It'll come. Robin used to say somebody in your choir is going to start spitting green ice one of these days. <laughs> religion, religion is a safe haven mm -hmm. for demons. Right. It's a safe haven because it operates That's in good. the power of what looks good mm -hmm. but has no power in it. Yeah. It can paint itself like lipstick on a pig. You'd be surprised how many demons sit around with their lips painted up. And religion took the time that morning to put their makeup on them mm. and bring them to the church. But let me tell you something. Just because it's not dealt with at the moment don't mean it wasn't noticed. Right. Right. Don't mean it wasn't noticed. It just means grace has been extended to you. Yeah. Get it together. And if you want free, you can be free of that. It's true. 
but you can't take over a service. Because once that starts, it's over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we don't do this. No, I don't. I need to get a bunch of these from Cat and put them out there or something right, for everybody. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. We'll make our own reel out of that. See where I get it from? <laughs> so, anyways. Then the, the Lord took me when I was asking him, and, and this is kind of not what, what my message is about, but at the same time it kind of is because today is a day of turnaround and it's a day of healing and deliverance. Healing is also deliverance. And so deliverance is a wide range of things. It's a wide range of things. It touches many different aspects of your life. But when I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, I said, what is deliverance? Uh, my friends in the back, will you put up Luke 4, 18 on the screen for me real quick? And when I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, what is, what is deliverance? I was like, if you could sum up deliverance for me, what would it be? Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Well, what's, what's the gospel to the poor? Well, you don't have to be poor anymore. Uh, he had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Then it said he closed the book. I said, Lord, I said, what is deliverance? If you could sum it up, he said, it's that right there. The word made flesh said that I've come to do this. The spirit of God is upon me to preach deliverance to the captives. He said, deliverance is one person and that person is me. And whatever he touches gets delivered. So today you need deliverance from poverty. Well then let him touch it. Let him touch it. And because poverty is captivity. And you need delivered from that. And so let the word touch it. That's what it is. Deliverance is the word. And Jesus was the Word made flesh. So it's Him. Deliverance is a person. And today He's come to deliver you from financial strain. You say, well, I thought this was about healing in your body. It's about healing in your life. It's healing in your life. This is just the offering. That's what I'm saying. Deliverance is a wide range of things. It is. From financial ruin, he heard. So this is the part of the service where healing takes place over this. This part of your life. But first of all, before you can do that, you have to purpose it in your heart. Because that's where the precious starts, is in your heart. But the pastor, the reason why I talked about the time in, in our time in Nashville is because the pastor said something that I used to say in my fitness classes all the time. I taught fitness for four years and taught several different classes. And I used to tell my participants, I mean, now you're talking, now Kayla knows, she used to be a fitness instructor too. How we never ran into each other, I will never know, but for such a time as this. <laughs> and um, God knows the friends you need at the time you need them. And, and so um, I would tell them, you'd be up there, now whether it was like, so spin was my favorite. Not You don't do this. <laughs> you sit on a stationary bike and you ride. But, because people used to ask me, well, what is spin class? Do you just stand there and do like this? I was like, no, no, that's, that's not it. I mean, if you want to strengthen like your equilibrium or something, sure. <laughs> S 
just go around in a circle all the time. But that was my favorite. That is what made me enjoy exercising. Now, I enjoy exercising. I do. Some of you are thinking, I knew she was crazy. I knew that something was wrong with her. And I do. I, I really enjoy it. The Lord taught me a lot of things through exercise. He, he taught me commitment. He taught me consistency. He taught me dedication to something. And it, it bettered my life. And so he brought that into my life at a time that I really needed it. And so I, I enjoy it. And I used to... So like when you're in spin class... And they keep the lights off. Now, that's the only class that they will keep the lights down in. The rest of them, you, you should see people trying to do body combat. Body combat is a kickboxing mixed martial arts class that I, my friends, have a certificate that I am certified in. Do not mess with me. <laughs> I'm my own security. No, I'm just kidding. And so, but if they weren't around, just back up. Anyways, so you should see people trying to do that. When you're like, when you're telling them, you know, to do a right hook, you need to put your toe up, squish it, and at the same time come around just like this. And you tell them all the muscles it works, and then you look out in the back and they're Doing like this, and I'm like, okay. But spin, <laughs> we'll work on that. But spin, they keep the lights off. And I don't know why, because that's the one where you need to see if somebody passes out. Because they're, they're back there going, God help me. <laughs> Especially the closer it gets. But then you got the people who are ready to give up by the second track. And, they, and it's over. Or you just get through the warm-up track. And they're like, class is over, right? <laughs> I had a cousin of mine tell me one time, who's a big, big dude, worked out all the time. He said, he said, why don't you come work out with me sometime? He said, you should. He was, he was like, you come lift weights with me and all this? I was like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. He said, okay, cool. He said, but it's not a fair deal because I will never come to a spin class. And I said, well, why? He said, because I would be done by the first track. He was like, I have no endurance and I cannot do that. So it's, I mean, it's a very challenging class. And um, I, I really took it seriously. And I really enjoyed it. Cried when I retired from teaching. I did. I cried. My picture of me saying goodbye by my spin bike, my face is puffy and red. I mean, I, I enjoyed it. It was fun. And, but you would have these people ready to give up, and I would see them. Mom can testify. Mom, I would hear her in the back going, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, help me. <laughs> she would be encouraging herself in the Lord. I kid you not, in front of the class, she would go, Woo, you can do this. Robin, you can do this. <laughs> and and any time dad ever came, me and him would be like playing air, like I'd be up there playing air drums on the bike and I'd look in the back and dad would go. <laughs> and this is what, what we're doing. And it was a good time. It was a great time in my life. And so... But you got them people in there. So I would see them, and they're really struggling. And on the back wall, they repainted it. They, spread, they had a graffiti artist come in and, and repaint it, and it would say, don't quit. Well, you never, ever hardly sat in the middle of the class where you got the full picture where it says, don't quit. You were either on this side where it said, don't, or you were either on this side where it said, quit. <laughs> and so it was like every time you would open your eyes, you would either, you would say, don't. Don't do this to yourself. Or on this side, you would say, quit. Stop. Stop. 
And so I'm up there with the headset and I'm up there trying to encourage everybody and tell them, come on, you can do this. You can do this. You got it. Whether you finish this, whether you finish this crawling, whether you finish it walking, whether you finish it running, whether you finish it dragging yourself across the finish line, just finish. That's all I would tell them. I'd be like, you can do this. And then I'd always tell them at the beginning of the class, Remember, it doesn't matter. You don't have to go as fast as I'm going. You don't have to do this. Just stay moving because if you're moving, you're working. I used to tell people that all the time. So I had my different phrases that I would say to encourage people. But my mentor at the gym taught me this one phrase. She said it one time. And I, I met her. She was... Uh, she was, I mean, almost 50 years old, looking like she's 25 years old. And I was like, she is my hero. And that, this is the girl I want to be like. Still looks that good. And so she always had this phrase. And you could tell, man, Tiff loved to exercise. She did. Like that, that, was, her, that was her thing. And she would get up there. And one time we're, we're weightlifting, we're doing the... The class and then I heard her and it's probably in the middle of a lunge and I despise lunges I'm just gonna tell you that I'm that person in lunges that are going Jesus Lord help me but they're good for you and she said something one time and this is where I'm getting she said you don't have to exercise you get to exercise and it probably was just a motivational quote to the rest of the people in the class. But to me, something went off on the inside of me. And I thought, no, I don't have to do this. But there's somebody this morning laying in a bed somewhere that they can't hardly move their legs and they can't hardly move their arms and they have trouble breathing. And here I am complaining about doing a lunge and they would give anything to be able to walk. And I'm sitting there and I said, no, Lord, I don't have to do this. I get to do this. Thank you that I get to be able to exercise. And that is where I, I, I just fell in love with exercising because the Lord showed me that. It went off in me. And He showed me the same thing about the offering, about tithing and about giving your seed. He said, He showed me the exact same thing. And the reason why I brought it back to my remembrance was the pastor said that when I was sitting on the front row Monday night. She said, we don't have to give. We get to give. And I, it went back off in me and I thought, no, I don't have to. I don't have to give a dime. I don't have to do anything. But Lord, I get the opportunity because you've blessed my life. You died for me. You absorbed the curse into your being. And because you did that for me, you released me and delivered me from poverty and gave me the opportunity just to get to give and dad said something the other night and it went off on me uh, uh, again and I just I thought dear Lord this is so strong he said Jesus died for you he went into hell for you he did this he did that and he just went through everything he said all so that you would just have a choice when you think about that all just so you would have a choice and there was no guarantee that you would ever make the choice to say yes he just did it so you'd have one. Because before he went to the cross, you didn't have one. You were going to hell in a handbasket faster than you could blink your eye. 
because you didn't have a choice. That's where you were headed. And so he did all of that just so you could choose him and have a way of escape. And in that same moment, the, the scripture says that in one stroke, he became poor so that you might become rich. So in that moment when he was being beaten and then he went to the cross and he died the ultimate death and then he went into hell and he paid the ultimate price and then he rose again. Now at that moment concerning your finances, you have the opportunity to get out of poverty because of what he did. And imagine what it's like when we say, no, I don't want to give my money. I don't want to let go of my money and give it to the kingdom of God. No, you don't have to do anything. You get to. That was the ultimate price that was paid. And because of that, you get to choose the blessing. He did all of that to give you a choice. There are people today, am I, am I trying to guilt you in? No, I don't want you to do anything you don't want to do. And I will never make you do anything you don't want to do. Nor will I push you to do anything you don't want to do. Ask all the teenagers. I will not make you do anything you don't want to do. They all come to me. Can I be in the drama? Can I be in the dramas? Sure. But it was their choice. I don't ask them. It's their choice. And I will not stand up here. I don't stand up here every Sunday, every Tuesday, trying to guilt you in, trying to guilt trip you, trying to make you feel bad, trying to push you into giving. What I'm doing is I'm trying to get it across to you that you and I, there are people sitting on the side of the road today. There are people in other countries. There are people that would give anything just to have a dime to be able to give. I watched somebody with my own eyes give rock in an offering because they didn't have anything to give so they gave rocks instead but what it, her seed was probably more precious than anybody else's seed in that offering basket why because it came from her heart and that's where the precious starts it's right in here and she gave rocks and somebody pulled a car up in her driveway and said the Lord told me to give you this At 3 a.m. that morning, that is a true story. Didn't know her. Did not know her. Didn't even know her. The preach is coming on the pastor. By the time I give her this mic, it's on. <laughs> Buckle up. So I want you to know today that sitting in your seat, watching on the other side of that camera, using your phone, whatever, when you go to give today, you don't have to. But you should raise your hands and thank God that you get to. That you actually got something to give. That you actually are even here this morning. And if you don't have anything to give, just get an envelope and write your name on it and, and act like it's your seed. Why? Because you're calling things that are not. Finish it. You do know the Bible. That's a faith statement and a faith act. And when everybody goes to raise up their hands and you don't have anything, raise your hands up with everybody else and say, Lord, nobody else knows why I'm doing this, but you do. And so this is my act of faith. And I, I'm believing that, I, that you're going to fill these hands and that I'm going to get to participate in offering time. But you know what? It don't take just money. It takes your heart. It's all about 
about your heart. So whether you ain't got nothing or whether you got everything, it's still about your heart. And when you raise your hands this morning, the Lord is looking at your heart. Thank God He looks at our heart and nothing else. And He will look at it and He will say, I see that. I see that. I see that. I see that. And you never know. At 3 a.m. in the morning, you could get a knock on your door saying, I just can't go to sleep because the Lord will not let me sleep. I've got to give you this car. I've got to pay your house payment. I've got to buy your children Christmas. I don't, I don't, I don't know what else to do because the Lord won't let me sleep. And that, my friends, can happen to you. Praise God. Stand up on your feet. You know, this is a week of thanksgiving. So we should be thankful that we get to give. We get to participate in this. I remember a time where I was the faith statement. I was the poster child of faith statement. Raising my hands going, Lord, I thank you for ten bucks. Thank you for ten bucks. Why? Because he would have put gas in my car to get back home. When you're on empty and you have no idea and you've just used the last of your console change. And so you're looking. And I know a lot of you have testimony after testimony after testimony. But guess what? We're all still here today. Praise God, that's the biggest testimony of all. Hallelujah. So I want you to hold up whatever represents your seed today. Whether it's your phone, whether it's your wallet, whether it's your purse, whether it's your hands. It don't matter because God's looking right here. Luke 6, 38 says, Give and it shall be given unto you good measure, Pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. You say, I believe it. I receive it. I call it done in Jesus' name. Now Malachi 3.10 for the tither. See, my flashlight just turned on on that one. That, that's how powerful a tithe is right there. It turn on your flashlight. Why? So you can see better. Praise God. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. God, ain't we thankful for that. Malachi 3.10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts, and all nations shall call me blessed, for I shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Say, I believe it. I receive it. I call it done. In Jesus' name, amen. Those of you that got your light up, I just want you to hold it up. While the ushers are serving the people, this, I, it, just, it just came to me. It just came to me, Emma. It just did. This little light of mine. Come on. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Oh, yeah. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. One more time. We're hide it under a bushel. Uh, hide it under a bushel. No. I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No. I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. Woo! 
Only at Church International. <laughs> oh, Lord, I see all them flashlights. You know, when you're in Alabama and you see flashlights on a phone come out, you're thinking free bird speaks into play. <laughs> Little southern humor there. All right. I'm telling that's what you got to do with your healing, too. You got to let it shine. You got to. You got to wear your blessings well, you know, uh, and, you know, we're just going to teach for a little bit. Man, when Krista was talking about the offering, I could have went off in two or three different ways. And, but the Lord said today was going to be a healing service, going to be healing. So you want to establish a foundation, and, uh, and we're going to pray, and we're going to minister to people today. But first of all, we're going to we're going to get in the Word, and so we establish a foundation of healing. So, Father, give us eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church at this hour. Amen. Amen. Isn't it wonderful? He wants his people. He wants his family. He wants his children healed. And well, and we, we, we talk about, you know, the children of Israel crossed. And when they crossed over, they came out healed in all areas. They came out with wealth. And you know what that wealth was a result of? They didn't go steal the Egyptian stuff. That was owed to them. That was their harvest for 400 years that was taken from them. And that was the wealth of the wicked. And it was being transferred at that time. And so you're in the middle and the beginning of a wealth transfer. And I, that just makes people shake. It just makes people mad. They get so mad when you talk about wealth. Well, wealth isn't just money. There is, there is prosperity for all aspects of life. Because if you have prosperity and you don't have good health, that's going to eat in to your money. But if you don't have any money and you're healthy, then your, your health will start to climb because you won't be able to eat right and you won't be able to take care of yourself well. And so, see, Jesus paid for every aspect of your life. There is nothing, there's not even a pin hole lacking in what his precious blood paid for. It covered it all. Amen. So you have to know first, is it God's will to heal? Yes, it's his will to heal. It is his will to heal. But where the will of God is not known, there's no faith. But faith begins where the will of God is known. And trust is the issue here. As parents, we want our children. We want them well. We want them whole. We, want, we don't want them sick at all. But do you know, and I was listening to uh, Brother Jerry last night, Jerry Savelle, before I went to sleep. And in his message, he said, and that's where I, I heard that from, he said, in the, in the houses, in the bathrooms, they're called medicine cabinets. The mirror over the sink, used to. Uh, some of them used to open, now a lot of them just don't. But a lot of them in the old houses, they opened up and they called them medicine cabinets because everyone stored their medicine there. And you have, you, you have to re, retrain your thinking. You have to get a, a course in retraining your thinking because we grew up hearing and participated in a season 
that is man-made and not even a real season. But we took it as it was the four seasons, not the group. <laughs> we added the fifth season to it, the cold and flu season. And people ran and get, got shots, got vaccinated before for the cold and the flu season. Well, I'm getting this in case I get it. I'm preparing for this season. So we go out, or used to, go out and buy everything and get in preparation and would say these words. Well, at, the, at this time, I always get the flu. At this time, people would say, I always get this at this time. I always, this always happens around this time. And sure enough, your words are working good for you. Because at that time, it would always come around. And so, you have to retrain you're thinking, and you have to take hold of the word. The word is final authority. It is final authority in your life. If this word is not final authority in your life, then, then you need to, to retrain your thinking. Amen. Amen. Is it God's will to heal? Yes. Let's go to Luke. We're going to be going to a lot of... A lot of scriptures. You, you have to take it and run with it. We're going to go to Luke 5. You take what, what speaks to you. You find your scriptures to stand on concerning healing. You know, I listened to Krista the other night when she was in Nashville preaching. And uh, I was watching it on my phone. And... And I could just, I, I remember every word she was saying, everything she was saying about her healing journey. And I was just, it just came uh, back all over to me the night I saw that light come in that bathroom. And I knew it was an angel of the Lord that came in. First of all, I thought it was a nurse. And then I got to thinking, wait a minute, because I thought we had, I had missed the x-rays and fell asleep because I slept in a, um, in a recliner. Uh, a lot of you don't know, but that December, before that happened to her, I took a fall down the back of my steps because the house that we lived in, the, the porch was old and the steps were bad, and, and I came out three days before Christmas. And I just scooted down seven steps and, and uh, bruised ribs. And anyway, I, I couldn't get up out of a chair. I was there. That was my Christmas, a recliner. I could not move. And I had my ribs bandaged. And, and so then I went from there, from December, to staying at the hospital with Krista so I couldn't lay down on a couch because I, I was still having problems breathing so I would I'd slept in a recliner and I wa my eyes were glued to that to the you know bathroom there I could see it well I had cut the light off I'm one of those persons I want the room dark I don't want a light shining and now I'm you know I was laying there last night and I was looking at all the lights, the Christmas tree, the, the lights at, outside. And I thought, this ain't working well for me. <laughs> and it's beautiful. And I thought, I'm seeing every light in here. But I thought, they said, we're going to come and take one more x-ray. And they came in. Or, and, and I thought they came in, in and I had missed it. And it was the, I saw this really bright light up under the bathroom door. And I thought, well, that's strange. And they, they were still in there. And I thought, well, they've never just come in and used her bathroom and stayed in there. <laughs> and, uh, and then I said, I missed it. 
And Krista said, what? I said, they came and took the x-ray. I thought I fell asleep. And she said, no. And that x-ray was going to determine whether or not she was going to get to go home or not. Or they were going to let her go home. And we had prayed that, that the x-ray would show that there was no air, you know, in the lung and that, that, that everything was good and we could leave. And so I looked and I said, Krista, I said, it's the, and she thought about it at the same time because it had been said this was being a prison to her and in her mind, and we had to get her out of there. And the Lord spoke and said, he said, when um, they had prayed, when Peter and John was in jail and the angel came, and they and left them out. Excuse me. Yes, Peter. And uh, I'm thinking of the the line. I got a lot of healing scriptures in my head right now. I'm thinking of when Peter and John came to the lame man, and Peter was in jail, and and the angel let him out. I said, that's the angel that had that had came. You say, well, it t it took a while. You see. A lot of times healing is not, um, it is just that. It is a healing process. A lot of people get discouraged if they don't. There is miracles. There is, um, and they have, and I've saw them. I've saw them. But sometimes you can get so used to being in the supernatural and seeing the supernatural that, it gets to being that it's that you think, well, when a symptom comes on you or a diagnosis is given to you, that it just doesn't happen to you, the healing, and because you've gotten used to it. See, if I was everybody's buddy and just shopping buddy and you just and buddy buddy you know and you just thought you could just come in and just jump up on my desk and we just buddy buddy friends and everything you would become so familiar with me that there would be no um uh, respect or there would be no uh reverence or honor put on the anointing as a pastor and you think, well, how come you can tell me this? Because you're just my, my buddy friend. So you have to, you can get in the supernatural and go to every healing meeting. You know, I was sitting in the in uh, Miracles on the Mountain. Uh, our whole family was at KCM the night the lady jumped up and played the piano and was healed that at Billy Burke's ministry, uh, that he was ministering on Miracles on the Mountain. That was a miracle. That woman was dying. She was dying. They took her out of bed and brought her so many miles, hours, I think it was, a part of Tech. Te you can live, listen, you can go for days in Texas. So you've got to take, you've got to become familiar with the word and just not seeing things take place because you might not can get to a healing meeting but you've always got the word amen so the the word is final authority final authority amen so Luke 5, and we're going to go to verse 12. And it came to pass when he was in a certain city. So this is not a parable. It was a certain city. Behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if thou will, thou canst make me clean. And he put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I'll think about it. You're too sick for this. I'm going to let my disciples handle this. Let's take your temperature at the door before you come in. 
He didn't say any of this. He said, I will be thou clean. One translation says, I love this. He said, will you make me clean? And Jesus said, of course I will. Well, sure I will. How precious is that? He didn't run from that. I've laid my hands on MRSA before. An open sore. Are you... Because it rose up in me. And see, this is what has to happen. I have to see and have so much compassion to see you healed and well. And the love of God that is in me wells up inside of me to the point I can't stand to see you leave the same way that, that you walked in here. It said, and immediately. It didn't hesitate. It didn't wait around. It said, and immediately the leprosy departed from him. So when Jesus spoke, and people say, yeah, but that was Jesus. But he said, greater works. Greater works will you do. Well, what's greater than that? We've never tapped into it. And that's why the enemy fears the church and keeps them uh, so uh, bogged down and keeps their identity crushed so that they can't rise up to the level where they can see and do and be a part of the greater works. You know, I watched yesterday, I was talking about just taking this and running with it, running with it. I'd wrote so much on my vision in my vision book and things that lived in Alabama most of my life, but I've never went to a college football game here. And my son in love, being the sports fan he is, and wearing their colors, he saw to it that we got to go to this game yesterday. And I, I said, you know, I said, I've watched all, everything I've asked the Lord. I said, I've watched it just come and, and it just happen for me. It, is it because I'm special? Yes. I am the apple of his eye. You are too. You are just as special. No, I, I, I'm, I'm kidding, but I'm not. And I had, and I had forgotten I had asked that, and that was a big, big deal for me. And so, you know, I, I got the experience, and he, man, he seen to it that I got the experience. We, we went in these box seats, and you could get up and go in and just eat all day till they put it up, or or they ran out, and. It was just awesome. And I said, my goodness. I said, this is, this is really good. And so we're sitting there and we're watching them play and all. I mean, we can, I, I just see them just right here. And one young man got the ball, and I don't think anybody's seen him get that ball. I did because, I mean, he was just right like maybe to Sarah from me, and I watched him get it. And I had my shaker. I mean, I was, I was representing, had the sweatshirt on. And I, I jumped up and I said, run, boy. <laughs> and he took off. And he ran that whole field. And nobody stopped him until he got to the other side and made a touchdown. Now, I don't know all the rules and I don't know what's going on, but I do know when he made the touchdown. But I seen him with that ball, and he turned around, and it was like he looked at me. Maddie, Maddie said, I didn't see him with it. But he turned, and he had that ball, and he looked at me, and I said, run, boy. 
And it was like, yes, ma'am. And he took off. I thought, get after it. And boy, he took off. And he made a touchdown. Well, that's what you got to do with the word. When you get the word that by his stripes you're healed. The Holy Spirit's saying, run. Run with it. Run with it. Until you make that touchdown. That that healing is, is yours. And it comes and it manifests in your body. Bless the Lord. And he charged him to tell no man. But go and show thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing according to Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. But so much the more went there a fame abroad of him. And great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. You see, because you can't hide a miracle such as that. You can't hide it. And he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. Hallelujah. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. It was even present, it was present to heal them. And behold, men brought in a, a bed, a man uh, which was taken with a palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and they let him in down through the tiling, which uh, uh, with his couch into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said unto them, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. You need to get you some friends like that. These are roof-ripping off friends. That it doesn't matter. If there's a crowd or, or they're, they're coming in, they're going to do what it takes to get you there. It was like Sunday. I wasn't thinking. You know, when uh, the woman with the issue of blood came to Jesus and she, she took her life in her own hands to even be seen in the streets because she could have been stoned. She wasn't supposed to be out. Twelve years she battled a constant flow of blood. You know she was an anemic. She had to have been. There was no way she was walking around full of energy. She probably was bare. She spent everything she had with doctors. And the, the scripture said, and she grew worse. She still grew worse. It wasn't getting any better. She was going to die soon. And she heard Jesus was passing by. And she thought, it's now or never. I'm going to die either way. I might as well die trying. So she heard of all of the healings. And she took her life in her own hands and went out in that street that day and had one person, one person saw her and tried to, and, 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 and the master couldn't have gotten to her. But he did. And she did. She had enough faith. She said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, just the hem, then I'll be whole and I'll just go on my way. She wasn't trying to give her testimony. She wasn't trying to make a big deal of it because she knew she didn't need to be out in the public anyway. 
So she just, she probably just, just crawled her way, fought her way, and grabbed the master's robe and touched, just touched the bottom of his robe. But there was enough faith that it turned him. He knew somebody. He said, they said, but master, people are throwing. He said, somebody touched me. And the disciples said, they're all touching you. He said, yeah, but I felt virtue leave me. What happened? It was her faith that moved him. It was her faith that moved him. And when it did, he said, who touched me? And she began to, when, when she came forward, and she began to tell her story, there was another person waiting, Jairus. Well, he had, a, he had a real need. His little daughter was lying at the point of, of dying. And he had to sit there and wait or stand there and wait. Now listen, me being a woman, I know we like to tell details. We will tell the whole story. You ask your husband, what did they say? Oh, they said this. No, I don't want to hear that. I want to hear the whole conversation. Tell me the whole conversation. What did they say? I want it segment by segment, not in a synopsis. So Jairus had to stand there and listen to this woman tell about 12 years of sickness. What was, Jesus knew what he was doing. He always knew what he was doing. What was he doing? He was letting Jairus hear to build his faith because his daughter is dying also. But he just hears, don't trouble the master any longer. Your daughter's dead. But Jairus already had faith that if he would come to his house and lay hands on his daughter, that she would be healed. You have two people's faith here. And it was great faith. Jesus isn't looking. He is looking for someone with faith in his word that he still heals. What did Jesus do? With, he went home with Jairus. He went home with him. Why do we tell stories? Jesus walked in there, and they're tumulty. Did you know they hired tumulters? Have you ever watched people at a funeral that really wasn't crying at all, but it was just in them to, to wail? They're tumulters. Now, I'm not saying, now there has, you know, I'm, there's people that are just sorrowing, just crying. But then there's people that just tumult. They'll tumult if they're not at a funeral. You just tell them the least bit of bad, just a little bit of news or something. And then they go off. Just tumulting. But what did Jesus do? He told them to get out. Put them out. Didn't say he asked nicely. Said he put them out. Put them out. That's what's wrong a lot of times in the body of Christ. And that's what's wrong a lot of times we don't get our healing. Because nobody won't put a tumult out. Because after all, ain't so-and-so, she get her feelings hurt. She's not bringing that turkey and dressing to Thanksgiving. <laughs> she ate her turkey at the house. She ain't even bringing it because you've done offended her tumulting. <laughs> well, how much you love your family member? <laughs> I'm serious. They'll love you later if they live. But it is up to us, to God. I remember when my grandmother was in the hospital, and, I've, and, and some of you have heard this story. 
before. It was in 1998. No, that was the year John was born. That's the year she went home to be with the Lord. It was a few years prior to that. And I, we were down there. We, t we did everything. Now, had she said, like she did a few years ago, and told me this, she said, now I'm going home, and looked at me and said, and don't, don't call me back. I was like, okay. <laughs> but she, she said these words. She said, when she woke up out of a coma one night, she said, beat her fist on that iron, uh, you know, or those rails of that bed. And she said, devil, turn me loose. Well, she knew what was happening. And those were her words. And I said this, I said, because we, she was a prayer partner of mine, very, oh my goodness, that woman prayed, she, she left on Veterans Day, 1998. She was such an intercessor and, and didn't even know she was an intercessor. She read Benny Hinn's book, On the Blood, 20 times. She, could t she had such a revelation of the blood. She made much about the blood. And I said, Nanny, that's what I called her, Nanny. I said, Nanny, if you want to stay here, I said, my faith is out. And if you hear me, and she did, she could hear me. I said, then I've got my faith out, and it, you can hook up. We can hook up together. And I said, you'll live. Well, we brought a, a recorder, tape recorder back then, and put it in a room and put the word continuously playing in a room. Put it on, you know, it just played all the time. And I wouldn't let nobody say anything about, about her dying. I just wouldn't. I was giving her every chance to make it. And I wouldn't say anything at all. I wouldn't let nobody say anything. Oh, I had family members get so upset with me. They just, and then they all got to having little meetings out in the waiting room. And if I walked up, it was like, shh. <laughs> and I look at them, I said, I know what you're doing. I know what y'all are doing. And they came to my mother, and they said, her death certificate is ready. She'll die tonight, and it's, we've already got it ready, and the doctor has signed it. Because we know he'll be gone. Well, she lived that night. So I don't know if they had to redo another death certificate or what. But she lived that through the night. Well, that's, that's my mother's mother. And she... And Nanny was, our, you know, she was, just, she was just the best. You ain't lived till you had her chicken and dumplings. Oh, my goodness. Whoo. Make you fall out on the floor. Think you're in the spirit. And she, they said, oh, well, well, it'll be tonight. It'll be tonight. And I thought, no, it won't. <laughs> and so, but I wasn't smart. I would listen to what they said and everything. And, and you know, we're just playing the word constant, constant. And, and, you know, some of her family would come in and, you know, relatives and all. And they'd say, Lois looks so bad. Lois will be leaving tonight. And I said, no, she won't. No, she won't. And I got, you know, I thought for a minute, and I've never really been one to talk up, you know, talk up to an aunt or somebody or, you know, somebody like that. But I thought, that's not your grandmother. That is not your grandmother. And you said things about her, you didn't like her? In? No way. And I know it. 
And I could get upset with you right now, but I'm not going to because her life's more important to me than your hate or your offense. And I looked at them one time, and I said, no. And they just look at me like, well, who do you think you are? And I thought, let me tell you something. While my mother worked, that woman, she built me a, a playhouse out of straw. And, and we go outside and play. And when I was sick, she'd put me in a bed with quilts piled that high and give, you know, uh, and stick me in and put that big salve all over you. She kept me um, while mother worked and, and every bicycle wreck I had or whatever, you know, I walked around with orange mercurochrome all over me. And, and she, she wa watched us and she loved us. I'm going to tell you something. You want to talk about the kindest lady that you've ever met was that woman. And I thought, I'd be dad gum. And I wasn't a pastor then. And I said, I, I will not stand here and let you talk her to death. So you are a tumulter, and I'm about to put you out of here. And I told my siblings, I said, we got to get tough. We got to get tough. And they were, they, they would... They would cheer me on for a little bit. But I had Robin, you know, and he's speaking the word. He's speaking the word over you, speaking the word. Well, we're trying to keep mother comforted because they're trying to get her because she lived. Now, I'm going to tell you this, what happened. We're all there that night. She's in a coma. They're lined around the room. They're waiting on her to die. The word's playing. She raised up. And she looked at this man that was against the wall. And she called him by name and she said, Do you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? He, she said, Because he's standing right beside I'll be Bam, she goes back out. That man's knees were knocking. I thought. She, I said, I would go to her and Amber would go to her and she'd, and this was Amber's great-grandmother, she'd say, Nanny, I'm going to be 16 in just a few months or a month or so. And she said, I want you there. You got to be there, Nanny. You got to be there at my 16th birthday party. And, and you know, and we'd just speak to her and talk to her and everything, speaking life to her, talking to her spirit. Because the Lord, she was, you know, she was in between two worlds at that time. She raised up one time, looked at me and my mother. I came out, of, I mean, she's in and out. Of uh, she was in ICU at that time. She looked at it. She said, "Now, she didn't use the word abortion. That just wasn't in her her speech in her conversation. So she called it abortion. She's just a little she's a little Cherokee country woman. And she raised up, looked at my mother, and said, "The water of the word will wash away abor the abortion." And that was in 19, whatever year it was, Amber turned 15, I mean 16. Yeah, she was born in 1914, my grandmother. And so I saw some of the family had my mother over to the side, and they, they were all going to go shopping for funeral clothes. And they had my mother over to the side, and they just whispered. And they said, do you need some stockings? I, I heard them. I had supersonic ears to hear, to, to hear unbelief. I looked at mother. I said, mother? <laughs> mother said, go on, go on. Y'all just go on, go on. We're not dressing for her funeral. 
So she, it, this rocked on for a long time. Then they started pressuring my mother. She's lived, outlived the days that, I mean, they're redoing these death certificates like, <laughs> like, wow. And they told my mother, they said, they said, okay, well, she's lived, so you're going to have to put her in a nursing home. Now, this was the, the second time, though. This was the second time. I'm getting my, my times mixed up because we did spend a long stint with her in the hospital. That was the second time she went back when she said she was going to leave. But this time, she came out of the coma, unexpected to everybody, and she just sat up and she started fixing her little hair. <laughs> just, and, and she got her glasses and she said, put them on and she said, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. We said, what do you want to eat, Nanny? She said, I'd love some biscuits and peaches. <laughs> you ain't lived till you've had hot buttered biscuits with peaches on them. <laughs> Hand me know what I'm talking about. See? Awesome. Wonderful. Well, that was awesome because they own peach orchards. And so my brother said, bam, went out the door. He came back in an hour or so with hot biscuits, peaches to on, the, on this plate. We never did ask him where he got them, but it's okay. <laughs> and she ate, just sat there, and you know, that little tray they put it. She's just eating, looking around. The doctor came in, chewed us out. <laughs> he said, don't you know her eating that could kill her? I thought, okay, well, you've been trying to send her to the funeral home for a week. <laughs> and she ate, she sat up and ate. And she, she went home, and we get ready for Amber's party, and it, we threw her this, you know, sweet 16 party, and everybody dressed up, and they said, Uh, some some of our family members said, well, we ain't got any clothes to wear to that party. <laughs> I said, oh, yeah, you do. <laughs> I said, y'all wear them funeral clothes y'all all went and bought. <laughs> and the very dress that was laid out for her to be took down to this funeral home down here, she wore to that party. <laughs> And that happened, didn't it, Mama? That happened. And I have a picture of her. She is laughing, sitting in a rocking chair. She's got her head thrown back laughing. Because, and she's wearing that dress. Now, years, uh, several years later, she she had she went back in the hospital. I'm convinced she would have lived a lot longer, but her body just wore out. It had been through so many operations back when operations wasn't. I mean, she she was uh, a corn stalk stalker um, stabbed her when uh, I guess that was in the 30s, and she had to have an emergency appendectomy, and um, and she just. She just had a lot of health problems. And, I'm, and she lived to be 84. I'm convinced she would have lived a lot longer had the, her health not had, had taken its toll on her. And, and, but, buddy, she could pray a revival in. And she could pray for you. And she stayed here as long as she possibly could hang on. But then there came that time she looked at me and she said, Now I'm going. And she looked at me and she said, Don't you hold me here. And I thought, well, Nanny, no, I, I don't want you to go. And then they pressured my mother, and they said, she's stayed here long enough. We're going to have to send her to a nursing home. And it was one across the street from the hospital that had been broken into, and my mother said, I don't want to send her there. 
And they said, yeah, you're going to have to send her there. And Mother said, if you will just wait and, and let me think and leave me alone, she said, the, I can hear something. And they said, okay, well, we've got to have an answer by this evening. And by the next morning, my grandmother was, she didn't went to no nursing home. She went to heaven. She went on her own terms. And at that time, we were singing what we call down here Southern Gospel Music, a Christian country. And the Lord gave me a song, and I wrote it. We have the last word from this word. We have the last word. We do not have to listen to demands of the enemy. And for them to tell us, you're going to do, you're, you're going to do this. This is what's going to happen to you. Because you've been handed down a word from a, a, an authority, so to speak, in the health world, in the health care world. Well, let me tell you something. This word right here trumps health care. A word from the, lip, from the healer himself. It trumps anything, anything from sickness to poverty, whatever it is, this word trumps it. And I'm telling you what, if you will hang on to it with every, just like that boy did yesterday when he grabbed that ball, he didn't even realize he had it. And I thought, boy, you got the ball, run with it, run with it, take off. For it is the word of the living God that is what's going to set you free and save you. It is what's going to take care of you. It is what's going to put you over, says the Spirit of grace. Do not take things lightly. Do not take the word lightly, for it is help to your flesh. It is help to your flesh. It is what you need today to hear to build your faith, so listen close. For I am speaking to every part of your being, says the Lord. Hallelujah. We esteem the word of the Lord. So yes, healing is God's will. Healing, healing is... There's three major areas in the study of divine healing. Healing of, of, for the world in the name of Jesus. Healing through the elders for the Christians who has little or no knowledge of the word. And healing for the believer who enjoys the fullness of Christianity. And so the Lord is going to touch you today some of you he's already healed in this service some got healed during the praise and worship today and and the lord told me he said you now i want you to tell the story about your grandmother today he said because that will build faith in people and what was wrong with her there may be in um and i i'm there may be somebody in here today that's dealing with um uh, their heart, a heart condition. And that's what was wrong with her, congestive heart failure. And that may be you in here today, or you may be you watching online. And if so, the Lord's going to heal that today. There's going to be fluid that has collected around people's hearts is going to just miraculously disappear. It's going to just dry around the heart. There's people today that's here that has mental, has been diagnosed with a mental disorder. Now, I don't know everyone's need unless the Lord reveals it to me. But those who have come for healing today...
Arthritis. He spoke that to me. Arthritis. We can't get to where we, we live in the just watching the supernatural so much. Don't get out of the supernatural. We all, we live, we're supposed to live in the supernatural every day. But then when it comes to our healing, the snipples, you know, some people, they call it the common cold. There's nothing common about a cold. Anything to do with sickness or dis-ease, the enemy sent it. You know, people's got this thing, not everything the devil brought. Well, if it has to do with stealing, killing, and destroying, he brought it. It's a part of the curse. Jesus said that I, I, I came that you would have life and that you would have an abundance of life. An abundance of life doesn't mean a deterioration of life, that you're, that, that you're just declining. It means an abundance of life. Listen, he cares about if you have an ingrown toenail. People might laugh at that, but that hurts. He's healing gout today. He's healing sinus problems today. Chronic sinuses. Somebody has a polyp in their sinuses. That's disappearing today. Now, if I've called out any of these sicknesses or anything you've been diagnosed with, would you come down? And if you've come for healing, and, and could I get some help? And, and we're not going to go down and just listen to a five-hour testimony. I want you to listen to instructions. We're going to... I'm going to lay my hands on you. Now, the, the Lord instructed me, I'm going to pray for you. And, and I, I'm going to lay my hands on each one of you today. And I'm going to say, be healed in Jesus' name. Now, I've got people that's going to help me, but... The Lord has, when I was in Israel, I was standing in the, in the garden of Gethsemane. And I was standing there, and all of a sudden, it was like, I was just praising, just thankful. That had been a, a vision of mine for years and years and years. And I was, we'll have to make two two. Line. So when the first line gets prayed for, if you will, you will go and sit down and let the second line come up. But it was like all of a sudden this stinging started happening in my hands, and I was just praising. And I've had my my palm get hot before, and I knew the Lord I was going to pray for somebody. But it started stinging to the point I, I you know I just wanted to do like this. I thought. And the Lord began to speak to me, and he said, Now I'm putting healing and a healing anointing in your hands. And he said, Periodically you will walk in this. You will start walking in through this, and you will start operating in healing. And so every time he tells me, I know I, I can feel that in my hands like I do right now. So I'm going to go down. Now you have your faith out. You have your faith out. And I'm going to hook up with your faith. And you are going to be healed today. Do you expect healing today? You have to expect it. You have to expect it just like I expected my grandmother to get up out of that bed and walk out and go to that party of Amber's. You've got to expect to walk out hill. Do something.
that you can't that you haven't been able to do do something whether if it's if it's your knees do do something because faith without works is dead now now when I, I go to I'm going to ask you to to do something now those that are behind don't touch anyone don't don't touch anyone and we're going to see healing manifest today hallelujah 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 if any of the the singers want to come up and and Hallelujah. Come on and let's just stay in this, as we say, an attitude of worship. Because healing is here. So stay in that attitude of worship. Faith is high right now. Come on and just worship. And begin to thank the Lord. You know, we believe He's alive, don't we? Well, sure He is. He's absolutely here. So let's go ahead and begin to worship. Thank Him. Don't pay any attention to anybody around you. Just begin to worship Him. This is, this is what I heard, that there's somebody, you're in here, and maybe you're in this line, you have breathing problems. It's a breathing problem. I want you to go ahead and start thanking God now for healing your lungs, healing your bronchial, healing whatever it may be that's causing you breathing problems. And when Robin comes by you, then you say, that's it, I have that, that's it. Go ahead, whatever's wrong right now, begin to thank God for healing your body of that right now. And when she lays her hands on you, take it and say, that's it. I have it. That's it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Whatever it is you're believing for, and when she touches you, you say, That's it. I have it. That's it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We have a supernatural God. Manifesting himself supernaturally right now. You on the other side of the camera. You reach your hands out because in a moment she's going to come up here and stretch her hands toward the camera. And that's going to be your point of contact. Hallelujah. Come on.
Ushers, stay right with her. That's it. Say, that's it. That's it. I have it. Ushers, pay attention. A lot of powers here. Someone could fall. Pay attention. While all this is going on, someone who hears voices in your head, that's it, it's over today. It's over, it's over today. Say it, that's it, I have it, I'm free. Watch her, watch her, somebody watch her. Take her to a chair. A lot of powers on her, so ease her back somewhere. You gotta watch it, watch, pay attention. the moment for arthritis to be healed right this moment wherever you are wherever you are receive it say I have it that's mine arthritis being healed arthritis being healed crippling arthritis being healed come on say it I have it I have it come on just stand there and say that's it I have it I have it coming by you to lay hands on you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on and lift your hands and praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Help her up and put her in a chair. Somebody watching, and you you have been diagnosed with stage four lymphoma. The Lord says there there's such a heavy anointing that has absolutely come in my hands until the Lord said I can hardly even hold them up. He said, stretch your hands out this way. Put that camera on on her, please. And help her with the mic, Cynthia. You have your hands right now stretched out toward that camera right now. I'm going to release this into you right now and I want you to receive I want you to receive right now in the name of Jesus and the Lord said to take it take it in Jesus name and be healed in the name of Jesus
Begin to do what you couldn't do. Begin to do what you couldn't do before. in here, one of your hands are crippled with arthritis, they, they, your fingers kind of turn, who is that? You need to come down here immediately, that's you, turn around right here and face me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, she's coming by you now. Hold your hand up. Hallelujah. Cynthia, come here. I want you to catch her hand just like that now. Lay your mic down. And just put her hand between your hands. Fingers together. Yeah. And just, oh yeah, come on and let's just bless the Lord. How about that? <laughs> How about that? Went straight. Oh, come on, y'all. It's a supernatural God we serve. Now, what you want to do is do that to for her hands, go and do that for others' hands. Yeah. Just go right on down the line. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You couldn't do that? Well, yeah, maybe you need to maybe you need to give a quick testimony to that holder. Just a quick one now. I've done hair for 50 years, and for about the past year, this finger's been like this, and then if I bent it too far, it would lock. And my husband would hold your me. hand up and show him how it used so to look. It how used it used to look. Like to look. This. So when Pastor Robin prayed over us. It started loosening, and the, the pain is leaving in my hand. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? Amen. Where is, where is that lady that was just here you were praying for? Where did I hold your hands, ma'am? That I just held your hands. Where are you? You were just up here. Oh, here she comes. Here she comes. Here she comes. Dear Lord, look at that hand now. Tell us about it. I've got my arthritis in these fingers. Oh, my goodness, the difference. They got big rocks in them. <laughs> yeah, I had, I had big rocks in them. Just come over here, too.
Come on and give the Lord a praise. drawer anymore. And she couldn't paint anymore. And she said, I don't want to go back to Georgia this way. And there, there, her hands are fine. Glory to God. Hold them up high, dear sister. Somebody get a shot of this on camera. Look at her hands. They're normal. Everything about them is normal now. Who can give her a, who can, yeah. Right there. Bless the Lord. Right there. Bless the Lord. Work, work your hands to show them. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, y'all. Oh, he's the name above all names. He's the name above all names. Oh, isn't he worthy today? Worthy of all praise. My heart will sing. My heart will sing. How How great is our God who sing with me? How great is our God? And oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Now, I want to I want to tell you something that. manifest presence of God was here from the song one. We walked out here, the glory was so thick, and it still is over in this area, big. Now it's over collecting over in here, and I want you to know that it's like a, a blanket that's set upon you. I watched a young man years ago in a service we were in and his leg was shorter than the other one. And it had been that way, I don't know, forever or before he was 12 or whatever it was, was it, all of his life? And, and he walked, of course, dipping as he walked his whole life. He was in that service, and all of a sudden his leg grew out. And he was just walking back and forth, and this was his words. He said, I can't believe this. I, he's just walking around. I mean, he's looking. Everybody's watching him. Some boy jumped up and said, this is just like magic, but it's real. And, and he walked with two legs the same length until he left that service. And they talked him into, or I should say out of, and he slowly went back. The two Malters did this. I watched, I watched uh, a lady one day on the stage at the old church, and I only do things as the Lord leads me to, like the hands that that happened a while ago, and, and the Lord straightened the hands. I don't know if that's good news to you or not, but He did, and so it's good for you, ain't it, brother? Yeah. Oh, see, I mean, see, this is. This is only Jesus can do these things. Now, you don't, don't. It just shows you he's alive. All he wants is you to preach something, give him opportunity to put it on display. And so, one day we're going to preach raising the dead enough and it's going to happen all around you. And, and anyway... Makes you wonder all these years of preaching and preaching how, uh, what is going to happen on the day of the resurrection. It's all those preaching words that's went out and out. He's going to put it all on display. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Now, the presence of God, I, there was a lady on the stage one time, and the Lord told me, said, and she was an elderly woman, said now, her, and, it's, and she was bowed over, and her foot was way shorter leg than the other. Well, I just kind of knelt down in front of her and, and took her little feet and pulled them out and put them together. And I just kind of pulled on that one a little bit and it gave. And then I just held it there and it gave again. And her feet came out even. And I mean, everybody saw it. They wasn't, I mean, you could see it. You walk it, if you was up there close, you could watch it as it came out. Until two Malters get a hold. Now, we were coming back from, from ministering the other day in Hendersonville, around Nashville area, and my little granddaughter was on the bus with us, my youngest one. They were all three on the bus with us, but the youngest one wasn't feeling well at all. And uh, she got up to the meeting, and she couldn't go in the meeting, and she told her mother, she said, I got all dressed up for nothing. And she couldn't go in. So on the way back home, the Lord prompted me, and I had gotten on the bus after the meeting, and I went back, and I had laid my coat across the bed in the bare back bedroom there uh, and I laid it down with my briefcase and my staff and all and um, I never do I never do anything like that unless the Lord tells me to and so we're going down the road she has this fever and she's she's just laying real still bundled up and so the Lord moved on me and I go back there and I just took my coat and I wrapped her up in it. And um, she slept, looked like nothing had changed. The next morning, she woke up and said, I'm healed. I'm healed. And she got up out of that bed, went to that ball game. After the doctors had given her a grim diagnosis on this stuff. But she got up and went to the ball game. Yeah, she did. She said, she, what did she say? She said, I'm healed. And her mother said, yes, you are healed. And she said, it's because I was in Papa's coat. So the anointing that's rested over the room, a lot of times when I wrapped her in that coat, it didn't look like things had changed right that second. But by the next morning, it had just soaked into her until she got up. And that's what's happening with, with us, see. A lot of times miracles, miracles have this was a miracle. These others were a miracle. But some of you, you think, man, a lot in my body needs to reverse. But you've been in this atmosphere. And you'd be like that woman. Some of you may be just like that woman who, who believed God for her eyes and nothing changed that she knew. But she got up the next morning and when she opened her eyes, she reached for her glasses the first thing she did every morning, put them on, and everything was so blurry she couldn't see anything. She took them off and it was clear. She put them back on, it was blurry. Took them off and it was clear she realized something changed from the day before to that day. So whatever you do, what started in you today, I used to hear, I believe it was Brother Hagen used to say, developing a healing and a curing in your body. Things are changing. Some of you were so severe in some things that whole things have to be change and that's healing and it's just changing don't turn that loose dear God man don't turn that loose well I, I didn't I didn't feel nothing really well what has that got to do with anything 
Maybe if you'll think about it, until then you felt everything. And then suddenly you, you're not in pain. Something changed. It's like Christus says, and the difference between what was and what is is him. It's his name. Hallelujah. So, uh, say what? Well, you, somebody go back there with a the mic, get this testimony, and see if you can get the camera that direction. I want people in the world to hear what he's talking about, and maybe you can tell them, show, show them, uh, dear sister, what you've got in your hand. You did, I heard you say it. Okay, can you get a, we got a camera? Yeah, there you go. He sees her. He sees me. Oh, come on, y'all. Now, if you wonder why people are going so wild, Hold up that thing you've got in your hand, sister, and show the camera what that is. Yeah. Now do you see why they're going so wild? <laughs> Glory to God! Let Glory to God! Hallelujah! What, what did he just say, Cynthia? Oh, he, he said he sees right. you. Yes, he said he saw me, and I'm as pretty as a picture. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been blind. Listen I, now. I haven't been able to see in eight years for un, unknown re, re, reasons. And for the first time, I seen myself in the mirror this morning. I shared it with my wife and my friends that were at our home. <laughs> oh, come on, y'all. Come on, somebody, 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 woo! somebody, somebody got to shout this morning. Somebody has to shout. Somebody has to shout. You're not taking this serious enough. Somebody has to shout. Somebody has to shout. Somebody's got to shout. Somebody got to shout. You got to shout about it. Shout about it. Shout about it. Shout about it. Come on. Grab yours. Grab yours. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Me, hot, 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 hot. Thank you, Jesus. Can somebody say it? Thank you, Jesus. I don't know how you sit there. How can you stay there? Get up and give God the praise. Get up and give God the praise. Oh. Deaf ears, deaf ears, deaf ears will pop open. How long, how long will you let the devil keep you where you are? How long will you put up with it? Get up out of the chair. Get up out of the wheelchair. Get up off of those crutches. How long will you put up with it? Healing is already yours. My Lord. Right before this precious brother testified, this is that the truth miracle. now, because I heard you. You were standing I, I heard right the beside Lord, me. I heard that glaucoma was being healed. Glaucoma was being healed. So you know if that's you? I'd take it. Then put your hands over your it. eyes and take it right now. I would take it. Come on. Come on. Put them it. over your eyes, which are whatever, and that put is, them over it now. That's, that's nothing to God. That is nothing to him. To do. To do. But it's everything. But it's everything to us. And it's everything. He that he wants to see this. This yes. is his will. This is his heart for this man. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> oh, bless the Lord. You 
can say I was there when it happened. I was there when it happened. Yeah. Yeah. This is becoming a house of healing. Remember a while back the Lord said it was going to start. Pastor. And it's happening. Kayla is feeling something in her back. And she's not her. Somebody. Tell them. The whole right side of my lower back was just hot. It just came hot all of a sudden. And I believe the Lord's healing somebody's right lower back. It's not me. I don't, I don't have lower back pain. So if that is you, then so take your healing. If that's you, take it right now. Glory to God. That's what you do is you say, I take it. I take it. I take it. I take it. <laughs> take Bless it, Kevin. Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Now, now do something you couldn't do. There. You know, I watched a lady up here. She began to do her hands. Her fingers got straighter and straighter and straighter. There was a man here while he was doing it. Cynthia was standing there. It was changing while he was moving his hand. Don't ever quit moving them. See, that just because you walked away from here, keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Don't take no for an answer. Thank you, Lord. All the Thank promises you, of God in him are yes, yes. and amen. amen. I heard that there was a, um, there's someone who has a, a child who has had tubes in, in that child's ear, and it hasn't gotten any better. Is that you in here? Or maybe your grand, grandchildren, or maybe they're, they're in children's church. Tubes or, or in the online. ears. Tubes has been put in, in your child's ear, and it, it just hadn't gotten any, any better. Is that you? Or somebody, it could be online. It I don't know. Be. I don't see the chat or anything, but I heard that. I oh, heard that. Oh, you heard it. I heard that. Right now we speak healing. Yeah. We speak healing yeah. to those ears Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus. You That's know? you? That's you? No, for this the back. is the back. This the back. is the back. Well, just take it, sister. Praise God. You know, Hallelujah. You know, also, I'll tell you what else, you, I'll tell you what else we heard, I heard, is that also, someone had tubes in their ears when they were children, and it damaged your hearing as a grown person. Now, you in this room. Thank you, Lord. Your Thank son, you. Micah. It, what, what about Micah? His eardrums never heal back together. Mm -hmm. How old is Micah now? 26. In this room. Well, we send healing to Micah right now in the name of Jesus. We send the healing to him. Psalm 107, 20. He sent his word and healed Micah and delivered him from his destruction. Now, that's my faith. Is it your faith? We send it now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. She was a little girl. She had uh, tubes put in her ears, and it damaged her ears so bad that uh, she has a hard time hearing now, and she talks really loud because she can't hear. Uh -huh. So I received that healing for Amen. her. Hallelujah. For heaven. Her name for is For heaven. heaven. That's so awesome. heaven is on alert for heaven. <laughs> in Jesus' awesome. name, for healing. That's Hallelujah. Awesome. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Yeah. Bless the That's Lord. That's all awesome. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's just praise him and thank him. Thank him. You know, be thankful for what he's done. Be thankful for what, what he's done. was the one who came and said Oh, thanks. yeah. You know, there's always one that will come back and say, thank you. Thank you. But in doing that, he healed. He healed ten lepers. Yeah. And Jesus said, where's the other nine? But you know what? When the one came back to say, thank you, he made him whole. He was Hallelujah. made whole in doing that. Whole. Complete. Shalom. Nothing missing. Nothing, nothing broken. broken. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. You know, while your faith is high, and, and I should have did this a little before this, but while your faith is high, and it is for for. You, you've saw a miracle. You've saw people get healed. You've seen people get set free. I was woke. Uh, the Lord woke me up on the third watch this morning around 3 a.m. And he showed me some faces that I don't know who they are. And the Lord said, these are the hostages. 
that Hamas has taken. And he said, pray. And I saw this woman's face, and I never saw fear to that point. She was shaken. And I saw a man, and he was looking at her, trying to comfort her. And the Lord said, if the church don't pray, they're not coming out. They're not coming out. And so I began to pray this morning, and I, that came back on me now. And we need to pray for the release of these hostages now. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. You want to lead us? Uh, Pastor, when you said you the watch, the watches are 6, 9, 3, 12. And we can go around the clock, and we're not taking any names, but if you would take a watch and pray for 15 minutes in tongues around the clock until they are released. Yeah. Yeah. Tuesday night prayers, especially you, but take, a, take it. Float it. If you don't make it 6 a.m., make it 9. And because it was significant that you said it was on the watch. It yeah. was. It was on a watch. And, and he woke me up, and I, I, I saw that in the spirit. And I began to pray over over them and the Lord said today and, and maybe it was for right now because faith is high in this room it's very high in this room and so uh, you know some may be believers that are there some may be and they may be crying out and they may be they may be uh, uh, as we were talking yesterday they may be saying their code word broken era that they don't have any more hope and and they don't, they don't see a way out. But we've got to pray as a yes. church. And we've got to have the word to stand on. Yes, yes. So we're going to stand on. I, I remember, uh, and you know, you always look for the scripture. Everything has to be based on the written word. And so I remember hearing uh, Eric Stackelbeck. Suddenly he said this scripture. When he said it, it stuck with me ever since. It says, and there came one, this is in Genesis 14, verse 13. There came one that had escaped and told Abram, the Hebrew. For he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eshcol, brother of Aner. And these were confederate with Abram. And when Abram heard, this is Abraham later we're talking about. His brother, which was his nephew, was taken captive. He armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. He divided himself against him, he and his servants, by night and smote them, and pursued them unto Hobah, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all goods... And also brought again his brother Lot and his goods, and the women also, and the people. Israel has armed themselves and went in. And so the church, as the church of the Lord Jesus, we stand on this scripture. In the name of Jesus, Genesis 14, verse 16. To turn these hostages loose. And we speak the word of God. And he brought back all goods. Also brought again his brother Lot. And his goods. And the women also. And the people. So we command Hamas. Turn them loose. In the name of Jesus. That Israel will go in. Find them and bring them all out. All of them. Their brethren their goods, the women also, and all the people. We call for this now in the name of Jesus. And you demon of Hamas, you spirit of hell, you demonic force known as Hamas, we command you to bow your knee and turn those hostages loose in the name of Jesus. And we call for their release according to Genesis 14, 16. In Jesus' name. Now, Cynthia, that's our scripture. Genesis 14, 16. That's what we stand on from here on. That they will be turned loose. I remember years ago, years and years ago, in a little country church, 
over here in the woods almost. Well, I guess it is in the woods. And I was just a young, wild preacher then. And the Lord sent me over there for revival. And the pastor had enough nerve to let me stand in the pulpit. And when I did, it was when Saddam Hussein had taken those hostages the first time. Y'all remember that back when we were a lot younger. And the Lord gave me the scripture. And he said, I can still see where I was. And the pastor was sitting right in there. And he, where the five-star man is standing, right there. And I looked down. And the Lord said, you stand on this scripture and command that he turn those hostages loose. And I was just young and wild enough to do it. And I said, now he's going to turn them loose. I thought the pastor was going to faint. And about a week after that, I was working a job. I was a chaplain and the maintenance man at a domiciliary. And so I was standing there working on some things out in the shed. It come over radio. For some unknown reason, he turned those hostages loose. He didn't know why. He was better off if he hadn't have. Don't you remember he had children around him and he was petting them on the head and all this kind of stuff, that bloodthirsty mongrel. And there he was petting them on the head and everything, and it was a sickening thing to the world. They couldn't get him to turn them loose, but the Word of God turned them loose, and he turned them loose. Now I speak to that demon of Hamas. That's a demon. That's a devil. That is a demon that is doing things that you read in the old covenant where they went in, just killed and slaughtered whole cities and ripped up the women and killed the unborn in their stomachs, everything else. That's Hamas. And in the name of Jesus, we stand on Genesis 14, 16. He brought back all of his brother. He brought his brother back, his, his uh, children, all the women, and all the people and their goods. Now we want them back. In the name of Jesus, and you begin to pray that scripture. Hallelujah. You know, when, when James was killed by Herod, he beheaded him. And when he did, he saw it pleased the Jews, so he was going to bring Peter out too and kill him. But it said, but prayer went up all night for Peter. And you have to wonder, did any prayer go up for James? But an angel turned Peter loose. And so we call for an angel to go set them free. Hallelujah. So if anybody's willing to pray on those watches, then feel free to do so. We need prayer going up for them. If you were in their position, you would absolutely love to have somebody praying for you. Amen. What we got going on here? Somebody walking without a walker, declaring, decreeing her healing. Yes, thank you. I'm just trusting and, and claiming my healing today. I'm believing it and taking it, receiving it today in Jesus' precious Hallelujah. name. Just stand straight on up, sister. Just stand on up. I feel like a hostage that's been released. Shouldn't this daughter of Abraham be loose? <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I do see her. Bless the Lord. Oh. Oh, hallelujah. Let me sing that. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Are you past the point of reach? Yeah. Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? 
Let me tell you about my Jesus. Come on. Do you feel that empty feeling? Cause shame's done all his stealing. And you're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Oh. He makes a way. Some time of corporate prayer. I mean, we don't we don't come in here and patty cake. We do some serious praying. We're in here for one purpose and one purpose only, and that's to pray. 
And so if you can be here on Tuesday nights, it's, it's awesome. The youth has prayer, and um, sometimes we combine it together, and, man, it's powerful. And so we have an awesome prayer meeting on Tuesday nights. And um, so I was sharing it with that, with them. My mom, we had went up to put her Christmas tree up, and the uh, men brought them the kids and their grandkids, great grandkids. We was all up there putting a Christmas tree together, and we had dinner with her, and and we were just having. Before she left, she said, "Would you pray?" And we were praying over Maddie because Maddie, in the next day, was having her wisdom teeth out, and when she recovered. Oh my gosh, so extremely fast. I didn't expect her to be on the stage uh, singing that Sunday. And I said, Are you okay? Oh, yeah, I'm good. And I said, Praise the Lord. So my mother said, Would you would y'all pray for me? I'm going to have this off my removed off my nose. And and she said, they said it, it's nothing bad. She said it's a skin cancer. So we all gather around. Well, I've even got my glasses on. I said, she said, I've been anointing it with oil, and I take, she, she shows me her communion that Kevin and Paula gave her, and she said, I take this communion, she, they gave her a box of communion elements, take it every day, and I said, well, mama, I don't see nothing on your nose. I said, what are you going to have took off? There's nothing, I don't see anything. She said, well, you can kind of feel it, but it has shrank. And I said, okay, well, it was a Tuesday, 11th hour, and I couldn't go. So Miss Linda, she, she helps us out. And so she, she took Mother down there. Well, when Mama got there, they said, you know what? They said, we're just not even going to do anything because that's not fair. That, that, we're just not even going to touch. So that was a healing that took place behind the scenes. I'm telling you what, the healing power of God's flowing. And I, I didn't even get to release this word this morning. And also when I got up at 3 a.m. to pray, I heard the Lord say, today was a reset. A reset. So if you needed a reset, a reset button. You know, sometimes you just need to have a, a little reset button in your mind. Because the Bible says, and that's scriptural because it's redeeming the time. You know, we did this long ago. If our day's not going just completely right, and maybe some cross words has, has kind of went out in the air, we all do this. This is our reset button. And, and, and then we just reset it. Re reset. So today was a reset in your life. So claim that. Claim that. A reset. You know, you go to chiropractors. I've never been to a chiropractor. They tell me I need to go to a chiropractor. But, my, you know, I listen to everybody that's been to one. I've never been to one. So, but anyway, not, not down in anybody that did. I've just never been to one. But they, they do a reset. They reset. And I'm like, okay. But... Not saying that I wouldn't one day. I don't know. I, you know, I, I just never been. It's like that ball game. I've never been to a ball game. But not a college ball game. I don't even know why I'm explaining. It's one of the things. It, it, just, <laughs> it don't even matter. So anyway, we got a lot going on, Kristen. I'm going to give you the mic. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, we do have a lot going on, but one thing in particular we've got going on in the next couple weeks. Yeah, right out here on this red brick street. And um, I'm going to get somebody to come help me. This is the host of The Lord Has Done Great Things, Mr. Dallas Eubanks. Good morning. I sure thank God that I was afternoon, that I was able to be here with you all today. So September 9th, how, how far away are we? Oh my, December. I need, okay, here, reset me, reset. Good morning, I'm so glad you're all here. We have a very special event coming up, you know all about it by now. Christmas on the Red Brick Street, that's at two o'clock, two o'clock on Saturday, September 9th. 
Okay, he lost his One position right now. Do you know what? You know why I believe? I think you're in the future, Dallas, for Rosh Hashanah. Amen. Okay. Amen. We're on to a next year. Let's enjoy this That's new nice. year. Okay, I'll do better. Saturday, December 9th. At 2 p.m., right out here on the Red Brick Street. Now, our volunteers have been employed. Our volunteers will be helping us run the show. So many of you want to help, and we need you to help. Many, many, many people have called the office. Help us spread the word. We do need your prayer inside that camera, and also inside that camera, along for you here uh, locally, if you want to help, send us a gift card. Um, anything else, Kayla? I, I know a gift card, um, a grocery card, and if you're even into getting an, a, a boxed new toy here to the church, uh, we would appreciate that. Uh, but that's at 2 o'clock Saturday, December 9th. We'll see you here. And so don't forget, everybody inside that camera, pray for us. We look forward to blessing so many families. Like, like you said, we're going to bless the socks off of folks. Amen. See you then. Thank you, Dallas. Everybody give Dallas a round of applause. How many enjoys watching the Lord has done great things? It's, we have so much fun. Um, I don't get to see the interviews until we, we're putting them together. And uh, then when I'm watching them, I mean, I'm just, it takes me forever to put one together because I'm so excited listening to people's stories and I get so intrigued. So, um, we didn't have one um, this past week, but, you know, I'm thinking we may just put out two this week. So, yeah, Andrea said, oh, really? <laughs> yes, we're going to put out two this week. So, episode five and six, we're going to put them out. So, we'll, instead of, you know, not having one this past week, we'll just give you two next week. So, it's amazing to hear the, your stories. And if you've got a story that has brought you here to Church International... If you have a story that you look back on and you say the Lord has done great things, I want you to find our host right here and find Andrea. And um, I want you to tell them and they'll get you lined up to be able to share your story because uh, we're actually going to put all of that series on GIEG TV as a short series. So um, if it doesn't get ran on social media before that comes out, then you can look forward to it being on there. And so I, I look forward to hearing your story and, um, and you know, and you don't have to, you don't have to live here all the time. We had somebody just do one from Georgia that comes in periodically when they can get here. And it was so much fun to, to sit and watch and, and listen to what the Lord has done in their life. So uh, be sure to tell somebody about Christmas on the Red Brick Street. Tell somebody not only about that, but you know what? Tell somebody what Jesus is doing in your life. Yes. Encourage your brothers and sisters in the Lord. What, what is God doing for you? Because you may be the encouragement that they need by listening to your story. And so, and, and if you just, you don't want to get on camera, you say, I don't want to do that. Well, then just tell somebody. Because we want to hear it. We want to hear what, what the Lord is doing in your life. If you have praise reports, especially after today, send them in. Send them in. Uh, uh, Kayla, where can they send them to? Oh, Chrissy, there, there you are. You're hiding. Churchint.org or robindbullock.com. So if, if you have had a miracle today, if there's been something that has taken place in your life, send it to us. We'll read it. We'll share it. Uh, we, we, how many watches the victory reports on the 11th hour with Roxanne? She will, she will read them. She will get them out. So please send them in. We want to hear those things. Why? It encourages us. It encourages all of us to keep going. And so we're, we're in this together. We encourage you. You encourage us. We do this thing together. And we're going to live long, finish strong. We're going to absolutely walk in complete and total victory. And we are going to make history in this earth. But 
we we need you you need us we all need each other it's like my favorite phrase it says you know i could do this without you because you could do all things you can do all things through christ who strengthens you i can, i could do this without you but i don't want to i don't want to do this without you why because we're better together than we are apart and so i just want on behalf of all of us this is thanksgiving week on behalf of everybody here at Church International that works behind the scenes, all of our staff, all of our volunteers, we want to thank you. We want to thank each and every person. We are so thankful for you. And we're so thankful. We're, Sunday is my favorite day of the week. I enjoy getting up, coming to church. Why? Because I get to be with all of you. Good to be with all of you and all of you watching on the other side of that camera. So we want to wish you a very happy Thanksgiving uh, this week. If, if, you, if you don't have anything, you say, I don't have anything to be thankful for. Why don't you stand up and take a big old deep breath? Trust me, when you hadn't been able to breathe, that's something to be thankful for. Trust me. Take a big deep breath and say, thank you, God. Thank you, God, that I was just able to take a deep breath. And I promise that'll just lead to an attitude of gratitude. It'll just keep coming. So we want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. And we want to tell you until next time we gather together right here around God's word that we love you. Jesus loves you. And God is absolutely good. Shalom, shalom. God bless you all. Happy Thanksgiving. We love you.